Okay, so who am I? I'm Judy, as Pastor David has just said. I come from Scotland. You will see Scotland on the back, the flag on the back of the of my picture. I work for the Trans-European Division and I work for the Youth Department. So I also have adventurers and pathfinders, as well as students and volunteers. And I have been involved with pathfinders all of my life. I love to travel. You might be able to see in this picture I have here. My husband and I were recently traveling. Um, I love to travel. I love messy church and I love doing crafts. So when Natalie asked me today to look at the scrapbooking honor, I thought wonderful, just something that I love to do. This is a very theoretical one in that I'm going to give you all the information, but I also need your, your help. So I'm going to be asking you questions throughout the presentation. And as Pastor David said, you can tell us in the chat, you can tell us on Facebook your answers. So does anybody know what scrapbooking is? Can anybody tell us what scrapbooking is? Anybody know? All right, Anybody? so we have a question from Judy for everybody who is uh, with us on Zoom and Facebook. Guys, put in the comment sections, what is the scrapbooking? Uh, and don't be like me who reads this word upside down or wrong way around. What is the scrapbooking, guys? Let's put it in chat. Does anybody know what it is? Anybody ever heard of this? Okay, Romeo has answered it already, a process of creating a book out of paper and different items. Wonderful. Yes, it's a process of creating a book out of different, uh, Judy, different things. Uh, Judy, we have a beautiful comment uh, from Wendy on, um, uh, on Facebook. She says, preserving your memories in creativity. It's a oh my goodness, she's already she's already seen my presentation. Thank you, Wendy, for your answer. So I have a question. Has anybody actually here, any of the Pathfinders ever tried to make a scrapbook? Anybody ever gotten a book together and and, and guys, tried tried to make one? Uh, you heard Judy, if it's possible, say yes or no in the chat section for the scrap. Did you ever make a scrapbook? Yes or no? We would love to know. Wow, so, so we've got Romeo who's made five. Exactly, yes. And some, some, who have, some who have not made any yet. Well, I'm going to help you today to learn how to make it. So another question before we start and we get into the honours. Do you think that scrapbooking's a new hobby or do you think it's an old one? So just tell me, is it new or is it old? What do you think? So old or new old or new hobby is it something that's happening now recently or do you think it's been around for a while some people may think it's new because the trolls in the cartoon like to make those crap books so they thought maybe that's a new but, but it can't the answers are coming maybe so we've got some people that think it's an old yeah. and some people that think it's new we actually a... when i went to research this this is a hobby that's been around since the 15th or 16th century so it's quite old. Yeah, I think Judy, uh, our, our, our answer on Facebook was also quite divided, but majority of people says, yes, it is old. Okay, so it's old. Maybe your grandparents or great grandparents, they may have gotten just a book together. They may have kept scrappings from newspapers or maybe the old messenger if you ever featured in it they may have cut it out and they may have just stuck it into a book but when we go on to modern day scrapbooking and i can move these slides one second for some reason so here's here's just a sample of of, of some of my scribes but modern day scrapbooking, a lady called Mary Ellen in Utah in the United States, she's credited in the 1980s with turning this into from an old hobby into a new hobby and starting off businesses that are devoted to scrapbooking. She decided that she wanted to make some pages to keep her family's photos as memories, insert them into pages, protect them and keep them in folders. 
So today we're going to look at the scrapbooking requirements. There are 10 requirements that you have to complete. If you've managed to download and print out your worksheet already, then you will see that all the questions are there. And I'm going to go through the answers to most of these questions. And the, the other element that you have to do is then one of your elements is you have to create at home your own scrapbook. So we're going to look at what the purpose is, why journal, what is cropping, why is it done? What are the four main types of scrapbooks used? What's the purpose of using acid-free products? What are the four different types of acid-free adhesives? What tool we can use to sharpen scissors and punches? The different types of paper. Then number nine is your practical one where you have to create a scrapbook. And then number 10, you have to memorize Joel 1-3. So let's get started. Requirement number one, what is the purpose of scrapbooking? Well, for me, there are a number of reasons why to scrapbook. To scrapbook, it could be to record a special event in your life. It could be to remember a special person. You want to gather all your photos of that special person and you want to keep them all in a nice decorative way. And it could be to act as a visual journey. What was happening? Where did you go? What did you do? But basically, scrapbooking is a way to archive photos safely. And at the same time, you're telling a story with those photos to keep our memories safe for years to come. So this is the front of a scrapbook that I was involved in a few years ago. Sorry, I can't be showing you the pictures in all of these scrapbooks because many of the ones I've been involved in were presents for other people. So one of our requirements, why journal? Let's look at this. Does anybody know, first of all, what is journaling? Can anybody tell me what journaling is? Okay, the question, why, what is journaling? And can we give the answer to Judy? Anybody know what journaling is? Uh, we have a, about nine seconds delay between the Zoom and Facebook, Judy. Uh, so uh, we're gonna maybe give a little bit of time uh, to see is anything gonna come through. No uh, problem. No problem. Somebody is mentioning and saying that the journaling is keeping a record of your life. Yes. So it's a time when we can keep a record of our life, keep a record of things that were going on. Yes, Jeremiah, it can be writing about your day. It's a way to express your thoughts and your feelings, to put them down on paper and to record things. Okay, so let's look at what the purpose of journaling. So we have to, when we're doing journaling, always remember the five W's. Who, who's in the photo, who took it? What, what is happening? Is there more to the story than is shown in the photograph? When, when was the photo taken? Was it a specific day or a year or a season or an occasion? Where was the photo taken? Maybe it was a special place or a special unusual place. And why was this a special moment? So the five W's of journaling, who, what, when, where, and why. We have also have a couple of answers here. Um, Romeo thinks that um, journals can be used for stress. <laughs> to and also be used for stress. That's also a good one. A lot of people do journaling now when they're writing down how they think or how they feel, and it can help to relieve stress. People are recommending it for mental health as well. So one of your requirements is asking us, what is cropping and why is it done? Okay. Let's have your answers. What is cropping? If I tell you that I have a photograph and I want to crop it, what happens? What are we doing? Okay, what is cropping, friends? Who knows it? Does anybody know? If I, I tell you the term cropping, what would you do? Am I going to have to give you the answer this time? 
Oh, Romeo. Uh, Romeo, editing or zooming in in a picture or photograph. Good, Romeo. Anybody else? Anybody else have any ideas of what cropping could be? And why would we do it? Okay. Editing. All right. Okay. We have couple, uh, Judy, we have a couple of answers on the Facebook. Wendy says cutting down, for example, picture. Uh, changing the photo a little bit. Uh, uh, also, we have that coming from uh, Latif Latifah and from M. It is uh, when you cut the bits or out from the photo. Um, and Tiago says, I don't know. So let's hear what it is. Tiago, let's help you to understand. So cropping, as has been said in some of our other answers, is to cut off parts of a photo or a picture. So we're cutting off parts. And why is it done? Well, it's done to remove the area of the photo that aren't needed, maybe, or maybe you don't want to use it. And it also gives you then more space in your scrapbook. So maybe you have a picture and you have a few people in it and you just want to be the main person in the photo. So let me give you some examples. So cropping can be done digitally. If you can see this picture digitally on a computer, I had a photograph from my scrapbook, but there was an additional page on it. So what I did was I lined it up with the software on the computer and I was going to hit crop to take out the extra part on the left hand side. How else can we do cropping? Well, cropping can be done. If you look at the picture on the bottom, it can be done torn to give an effect. If you look at the green paper, I've torn the green paper and it gives it a nice effect. Or cropping can be done with scissors. The photograph on the top has been done with scissors and I decided I didn't want the background in any of these pictures. I wanted to just cut out the two people that were in the pictures. So that's how I edited these pictures. So now a chance for you. I've shown you a picture now from my childhood. And the question I have for you is, would you crop, thinking about why we crop for scrapbooking, would you crop this photo? Give me first of all a yes and a no. Would you crop this photo? Okay, Jeremiah thinks we should was, crop this photo. He was very quick to respond. Very yeah. quick, very quick. So friends, would you crop this photo that Judy is showing on the screen? Yes, keeping, in, no. keeping in mind that cropping, as we've said, is to edit a photo with parts in the photo that we don't want for our scrapbook. It may be taking up extra space and we might not want it. Okay, Ro Romeo responded, it does not show anyone's face, so yes. Also, you are the main person on that photo. Well done, Romeo. You've answered my question before I even asked it. So if this was my photo, I'm using this photo for scrapbooking, then Romeo, yes, I would crop the picture. And exactly why you said I would take it out because the people on the left and on the right, you can't really see them. I don't want the arm in the way. I don't necessarily want the side of my grand's face. And so, yes, I would crop it down. And I would probably, if I was choosing to do it, I would crop it probably with scissors and I would cut the main parts oh, out. Thank God. Well done. Okay. And I think you're talking to us, but it's okay, I'm muting you. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. Uh, no my, problem, my, no my, problem. My, my daughter came in, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome daughter. <laughs> Okay, requirement number four. What are the four main types of scrapbooks used? Now, I have four slides now that I'm going to show you. The four main types, now I'm not saying these are the only types of scrapbooks that you can use, but these are the four main types of scrapbooks that are used. So the first one is called a strap hinge. If you look in the photograph, you can see down the middle where the book is bound. And then across the sides, you can see straps that are going to keep this together. So our first one that I'm telling you today is about a strap hinge. 
Our second one is called a three ring binder. Now, it may not necessarily have to be that it just has to be three rings. It could be four rings. It could be two rings. But this one shows you three rings and what you do with this one, as you can see, you open it up like a folder and then you're able to place more, more pages down into it until you've got all the pages that you want to have in your scrapbook. Number three. So the third one is named a post bound. As you can see, this one also has many pages inside. And at the top, where it's folded over, you pages you, the book, you can open the leaf and you can undo them. You can take it off, the cover off, and you were able to put more in. And if I give you, if I tell you, this is probably my favorite one because it's very easy to do and I can always add more pages when I want to. So number three, we have the post bound one. Number four, you may recognize, some of you may recognize these from, from school or from the shops when you've been in, and it's called a spiral bound. So this one opens up on the spiral hinge, the pages are already there, and all you're going to be doing when you open this one up is already to put in what you you want to have on each page. So you don't have to add any pages to it. It's already there, it's already bound. So that's your requirements for number four. We've told you the names of the different ones. Requirement number five is asking, what's the purpose of using acid-free products? But first of all, I would like to know from you, what does it mean? when we say acid-free. Friends, does anyone know what it means acid-free? What does it mean? So if something says it's acid-free, what do you think it means? Romeo, well done, Romeo, non-chemical materials. So acid-free is is usually paper that's infused in water and it gives a neutral basic pH. So it's not acidic and it's not going to then ruin your things. So what is the purpose of using it? Let's see. So acid-free materials, we've said acid-free means that it doesn't have acid in it. And we use acid-free materials because it slows down the deterioration process over time. Deterioration means that you've got something and then over time, it's going to break down, it's going to be destroyed, it's going to fall apart. And that's why we choose in scrapbooking to use acid-free materials because it slows down the process over time. I'm going to give you a few examples here of things that are acid free and why. So, for example, lignin, and I hope I say the correct, term, correct chemical term, it's a chemical and it's found in paper and it causes it to yellow with age. So if you look on the left hand side of the slide, you will see that this paper over time, when it started, it was probably quite white. And now over time, it's gone yellow. If you also look, I have, because I told you I work in the Pathfinder department, I found a folder a little while ago and I found, and somebody had very many years ago archived all of the Pathfinder honors and the awards there. But I discovered that the paper that was used there obviously has this chemical in it and over time you might be able to see it's very yellowy and the paper started to disintegrate. So I decided that I was going to take them all out and I was going to change how they are stored. And I'm just going to show you, maybe you'll be able to see that I've put them into these pockets, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And so this is now acid free and it won't be destroyed over time. So another example, you may know it as PVC, polyvinyl chlorine. It's a plastic. 
And it's the type that degrades over time. So it breaks down over time and it releases the chlorine as a gas, which damages your photographs. So as you can see in this bottom one, the photograph itself is not destroyed as such, but it's starting to go old. It's aging with time. And so we want to take these photographs and we want to protect them. So the best things you can use, as we've said, are acid-free. So the polypropylene plastic is the type that is safe to use in scrapbooks. And it's the one I just showed you that I have taken and I have now started to archive for our office. Again, we're going to look at many different things that are acid free because we don't want acid to come anywhere near our scrapbook. So what are the four different types of acid free adhesives? You know what an adhesive is? Something that sticks something that's going to stick down what you want to put in your book. So let's look at the different types of acid-free adhesives. You have what you call photo tabs or photo splits. And in this photograph, you can see that they have in a line, in a reel, they're double-sided and you would peel them off and you would use them to stick down your photographs or your paper or whatever else you're putting into your scrapbook. So you've got photo tabs or photo splits. You also have photo dots. If you look closely on here on the, on the reel, you will see that there are tiny little dots of glue that are stuck. And again, you will use the dots on the back of your photos, on the back of your paper, and you can stick them down. You can use a glue, glue stick or an acid free cement, a glue, something that's not going to have acid in it. As you see, this one says PVA adhesive. So PVA is fine, but the PVC was not fine. So it's going to be non toxic. It says at the bottom non toxic. So we've got the glue. Then we've also got double sided tape. Again, Stick on one side of what you want to put down and the other side can be stuck into your scrapbook. So you've got double sided tape. And then here you have photo mounting corners or sleeves. You can see on the top of the picture, it even says on the box acid free. And you'll find that if you if you go into the shops nowadays, most of your products will say acid free. They're all going to help you to choose the correct things to put in your scrapbook so that nothing happens to them. So you've got the acid free corners that you can stick your photographs in and you know that this is not going to come out and it's not going to destroy your photos and your scrapbook. So there we have, we've got all the five points we need for requirement number six. Number seven asks you the question, what tool is used to sharpen scissors and punches when they get dull? Let's see if you can give me some ideas. Now, see that the word tool is an in inverted comma. So it's not really a tool, but it's something that we could use possibly in crafting to sharpen our scissors or our craft punches when they get dull. Does anyone have any ideas what they could suggest what might be able to be used to sharpen our scissors and sharpen our punches? Okay, so here is a new question uh, from Judy. What can we use to sharpen our scissors and punches? Uh, Jeremiah uh, says flyer. I think he might mean file, but I'm not sure. Fire, fire. Could or be. Filer. Could be. Could be one idea. Anyone else think of anything else that we could use to possibly sharpen it's our scissors? Sorry? Sorry? File it. Ah, okay, to file it, yes. Okay. Romeo says other circular metal items for scissors, but I don't know. It's actually, actually much easier than you're thinking. You're thinking very complicated. For crafts, <laughs> 
There are two things that I'm going to show you. There are a few others, but things that are very, very simple to use. And I'm sure that almost all of you must have them in the house. Tin foil. Tin foil can be used to sharpen your tools. So they can be used to sharpen your scissors and to sharpen your punches. If you're going to use these next methods, please, and you're very young, then please be careful and ask an adult to help you. So I'll show you the second one, tin foil. I'm going to show you how, and sandpaper. Now, normally you would think with sandpaper, you're rubbing things away, you could rub them, possibly, but it's even easier than that. You can take a piece of tin foil, you can fold it over a number of times, and then all you simply do is use your scissors to cut. So here in the picture, you can see you've got sandpaper, you've got your scissors, and all they're doing is simply cutting along. And because your scissors is only a thin metal, it actually doesn't take so much to be able to sharpen them again for you to be used. I've also put in a link here to WikiHow, that if you look on that link, you will see how they tell you to fold the different things and to sharpen your scissors or your craft punches. So Tamu, I hope that this has answered your question. I hope so, Tamu. Watch the link. The, the PowerPoint presentation will be online later, and then you'll be able to get the links, and you'll be able to go back and watch the links to see exactly how to do these things. Number eight asks us, five different types of acid-free paper used in scrapbooking. So I'm sure there are many more than simply five, but your requirements are asking you for five different ones. So I'm going to give you the names of five different types of paper today. So the first one we have is vellum. It's a very see-through type of paper. It's a very, almost a shiny feeling of the paper, a, a smooth type of paper. And you can, you can have it where it's printed on, as you can see in the picture, some of them are printed on, some of them are clearer. And this is an acid-free type of paper that can be used. So the second one we have is mulberry. And it's actually made from the mulberry tree. You look closely, you can see that it's got long fibers, which gives the paper its distinctive finish. It's a very soft, a very almost, I would describe it as a kind of fluffy feeling. So the fibers also give the mulberry paper a fine crispy edge that if it's torn, it makes an attractive finish. And if you remember one of my first pictures where I showed you I had torn the paper, this is the paper I was <laughs> using and it gave a nice, a nice edge to it. So it's mulberry paper. You can use cardstock or plain colored paper. Again, make sure that when you choose your plain paper or your card, that it just tells you that it's acid free. You don't want to have anything that doesn't have, that has acid in it. So acid free paper. Then we have specifically for scrapbooking, printed patterns. Now, when we get to the requirements of what you have to do later on at home, when you have to make your scrapbook, you will have to decide on what you want to make in your scrapbook. What do you want to do? And then you can go and you can look online or maybe in the shops and you'll be able to see all these different things that will match your theme. You've got your handmade papers. The top one is mulberry. The bottom one is a painted one that we've done. And you can make your own papers as long as you're not using the acids. Requirement nine. So we're getting towards the end. We've got two more requirements and then I'm going to show you all different hints and, and, and things that you can do. So requirement nine, and this is the practical one that you have to do. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you've done with it afterwards. I know that De Pastor Diane will encourage you at the end. And I really look forward to seeing how creative you are. So you have to make a scrapbook. It has to be at least 12 pages. And I've, I've converted the size into to what we have mainly here in the UK. 
it's 12 by 12. So it's 12 inches by 12 inches. It's quite big, but that's the normal size. When you look for scrapbooking papers, that's the normal size of book. You also get one that is eight by eight, which is slightly smaller, but this for your requirement, you have to do 12 by 12. And you're going to make it on one of the themes, I'll show you on the next page, but you have to make use of colored paper, stickers, decorative scissors, matting and framing, which means that you're taking your photograph and you're putting either a frame around it with paper or you're putting it onto paper and layering it, and journaling. So those are your requirements for your scrapbook. Now you can think about it. You can make one maybe on the school year or on a sporting event, maybe a holiday building project, maybe a family wedding or your birthday party, or maybe something about you, something from a, a scrapbook about from your birth up until where you are now. It could be family reunions or it could be friends. Now, I'm going to show you a few from different ones that I've made. As I said to you, many of the scrapbooks I've made in the past, I've made for other people. So I can't show you everything because those were given to other people or they have photographs of other people in them. But here's one of my first ones down in the bottom corner, Judy's African Memories. The first time I went to South Africa in December 2007, I made a scrapbook at the top. I took the pages. I, had took, I took ones with planes and travel and I put all my tickets. I put the journey so far and I scrapbooked those pages. Then one of the places I visited when I went on my road trip to Namibia, I put the coins there because I thought that's interesting to keep memory of. And then one of the pictures I decided I'm going to be creative with this, with this photograph and I cut it up. So you don't have to keep the photographs the way you want the photographs just as a square. Be creative, have fun, make them, join them up in different things. Now, when we talk about these, we're talking about, remember, we're creating memories. We're creating a file with memories. So some of the memory joggers, when was the picture taken? Was it a special day or a year or a season? Was it a special occasion? How did it feel? How did you feel? What were the sights, the smells, the sounds? Did something funny or embarrassing or sad happen? So keep all these things in mind when you start to plan your scrapbook. Again, I'm showing you a few more pages from things that I did, places I went, and what happened. So you can see some of the different styles, some of the different pictures, and some of the different things that create what it was. What was going on in the world at the time? Maybe you want to remember that 20 years from now, what was happening in the photographs? So if you make notes about this, the person that's reading it in 20 years time will know, ah, that's what was happening 20 years ago in that Pathfinder's life. Oh, maybe that's the styles that were happening, the things that they were wearing. Maybe it was just the Pathfinder uniform. Maybe you want to be creative and make a scrapbook about your pathfindering journey, the honors you've done, or camperies you've visited, or other pathfindering events that you've had as well. You can also think about the styles of writing, different ways to write. You can write with script. You can write in block, you can write with calligraphy, you can use different types of pens, and I've put some links into different types of pens, marker pens, metallic pens, you can use crayons, gel pens, and you can also use a lot of decoration in your scrapbook. As you can see here, different letters, different washi tapes, You've got pens, you've got tags, you've got embellishments, things that you can stick on, be it wooden or felt, or it all depends on what you're planning to make your scrapbook on. When it comes to journaling, again, I've got some links, but use bullet points. You're not writing out a whole big long story. You're just writing things, for example, Maybe it's your first ski trip with mum and dad. Maybe you just want the date, the place, the time, and what happened, how you felt on that day. It could be that it's helpful to include a date so that you know when it happens. It could also be that it's adjectives. How did you think? How did you feel? What was going on? You can provide it, provides references. 
but include in there somewhere names of people. It might be your name if you're creating it about yourself. It might be the location if it's a Pathfinder Campery. Whatever it is, make sure you add all the details. I know some people get very worried when they think, hmm, scrapbooking, oh, they always look so good. And what if I make a mistake? Literally, don't worry about it. I'm always making mistakes. You can cover up a mistake. You can cover it up with stickers, with pictures, with a piece of paper, with other embellishments. Whatever you do, do not worry about your mistakes. Nobody's going to know how you wanted it to be laid out. Nobody's going to see what happened. They're not going to know, did I want the word Paris to be straight? But then one of them was, was a bit off, off to the left and the other one. Um, when you look at it now, you just say, oh, look, it's creative. I did it different ways. And that's all that people are going to see when you finish. They're going to see the end result. They're not going to see your mistakes. Our last requirement for our scrapbooking owner is for you to memorize Joel 1, 3. And this Bible text says, tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. And that's what scrapbooking's for. We want to tell our story now to the next people, to the next generation, and tell. So remember, it's telling a story. And this Bible text gives it. Tell it to your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Just for reference, you can see on the presentation some of the links. Look on the internet. You can find resources on Pinterest. You can find all over the internet. And remember, scrapbooking allows us to share with future generations and others what we believe, how we lived, and helps us keep the past alive for the future. So now I've given you the information. Now it's over to you. I look forward to seeing how creative you can be. Remember, this is your story. This is nobody else's story. This is your scrapbook. What did you want to tell? What did you want to say? How did you feel? And make sure, Pastor Dan, you're going to give them the information, aren't you, where they can share. And I look forward to seeing how creative you can be. Yes, exactly. Send us your pictures. I want to see your story and all about things that you've done. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Judy, for, for a very interesting um, presentation. You did a very good job. <laughs> I Thank you so you much. I hope that you enjoyed it as well. I believe that we've all enjoyed it. Um, and there, there are some comments. Romeo wants to, to do it in about two months, and then he will show us as well it's not it's not going to be overnight because your requirement as you see is 12 pages it can be done very quickly if you already know what you want to do the topic you already want to know i find that my biggest problem my biggest time consuming is thinking about what i actually want to do once i get the idea of what do i want to do how do i want to do it the actual doing the scrapbook is very easy so i expect you to be able to take some time to it and Judy, you also have many positive comments uh, from the Facebook. Uh, we have we have Wendy who says you know they're gonna you know they're gonna do it. Uh, we have a, a, a Tiago who said this is a beautiful challenge to us. 